Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Nonprofit Show. Tony, best day of the week, Friday. Friday, it is the best day of the week. Fundraisers Friday. Love, love, love these special episodes of the Nonprofit Show. I get you all to myself for 30 minutes to get into that amazing brain of yours to learn how we can do better at fundraising, which is, you know, as you once told me, it's the, you know, the gas in the machine, baby. We got to have that in there. And um, so today is a really interesting conversation mm -hmm. about engaging boards in nonprofit fundraising. Mm -hmm. Like, <sighs> <laughs> well, we have we have talked about it in, in many episodes of the nonprofit show, Julia, whether it be specifically with Fundraisers Friday or or any day of the week within yeah. the nonprofit show, mm -hmm. uh, as we talk about fundraising and the fact that this really is a team sport. So when we look at your nonprofit organization, when we think about who are members of our team, board members are certainly members of your team and uh, and folks that can contribute to uh, the success of all of your fundraising initiatives. So it's, it's a really great conversation uh, and hopefully folks will get a lot out of what we share today. Yeah, I think so. It's something that I was talking to you about in the green room saying, um, I, because I took the lead on on the, this conversation from you, and I said, as as I was building this deck, I was like, holy moly! I looked at the trajectory of my community involvement in community fundraising, not as a paid professional, just as a mm -hmm. community member, and I looked at the different decades of of my life and what I could have done better and and what I did well, right? And so I can't wait to explore that. You know, another, another thing that I like to explore every day is this, um, a point of gratitude with our amazing presenting sponsors. And they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, and your part-time controller. These are the folks that join us day in and day out. Again, I'm Julia C. Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy, joined by Tony Bell, the amazing mind of Tony Bell, Mr. Nonprofit Consultancy, um, here to give us his wisdom. So educating boards on what is and what is not fundraising. That's like, that's a big picture issue, right? Yeah, it, it's a big question. And, and I'm not sure that I have a real solid answer <laughs> to, you know, to educating boards on what is and is not fundraising. I think the the more kind of critical, if you will, kind of conversation is around how do we do fundraising within our organization? And how can board members be a part of the way that we raise funds to support the communities that we serve? Because initially I thought about educating boards on what is and it's not fundraising. And I kept leaning toward more towards kind of activities, but then I realized some of those activities hold true for some organizations, but not necessarily true for others. So the first thing I thought about was what, what fundraising is not. And I thought, well, fundraising is not just picking up the phone and calling someone and asking for money, mm -hmm. but it is. <laughs> for some organizations that have call centers that are raising money to support their mission, that's truly what they're doing. They're they're dialing for dollars. Uh, what else is, is fundraising not? Well, fundraising isn't just networking events and, and galas, uh, but it is. <laughs> so so I really struggle <laughs> with understanding, you know, how to convey what what is what is solid fundraising and what is not. Uh, right. so, so I, again, I think there's just so many nuances in, involved in this work that, that I struggled with that. So, uh, so again, certain organizations, it's going to be very clear for them and yeah. the way in which they're raising money, what is or is not fundraising. And maybe other organizations, it's a little, it's a little murky and a, a little gray. And so this provides them that opportunity for, uh, for clarity as we kind of move through today's conversation. You know, it seems to me that um, this speaks to the issue of board training. Um, and, and, and I think 
what you said is is really fascinating it, it, and it kind of is sad but it is but it isn't it, it's not for some organizations it goes this way and other organizations it goes that way and it seems to me that um you have a lot of you know people doing their own thing if you don't have a sustainable program where you educate them and everybody's rowing in the same direction. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like we spend time training our boards on things or talking about certain things. Um, and we're not doing it about fundraising. You know, yeah, we're talking sure. about compliance and accounting and strategic planning and and that takes up all that air in the room, but we're not talking about fundraising. I mean, do you think that's true? Yeah, I, I think for certain organizations that is true. And, and I think where there's a great opportunity is for the smaller to medium sized organizations to really lean into this kind of training for their board members. A lot of those organizations are, are again, I'm making assumptions in generally speaking, but a lot of those organizations are relying on board members to help support day-to-day -day operations, or they're really involved in decision-making uh, that affects uh, how the organization is, is run or, or the outcomes of the programs and services that, that it's offering. Uh, so a lot of times uh, these opportunities for uh, training for board members seem to get lost in the other priorities that exist uh, with the organization. And I certainly understand that. But I know right. from my experience uh, in, in working with boards and the board training that I've done is that a large percentage of board members have a fear of fundraising. Mm -hmm. And they fear fundraising because they don't understand the process and how their contribution supports the larger, again, activities or process uh, yeah. within the organization. Yeah, I I love that you boiled it down to that because I think you're absolutely right. And, you know, um, we I think when we think about board members, most of them are coming from the poor, the for profit world. Right. Mm -hmm. And and that involves sales. And so they think of sell, selling, you know, one way. And then they move into cause selling, which is a, a different thing, but it has a lot of the same skills. So it gets a little convoluted. And um, I, I think that's where we kind of need to, to talk about what it looks like. You have a really interesting four, I'm going to say four pieces of the pie. The prospector, prospector, talk to us about that. Yeah, so some of this comes from uh, the, the curriculum within the Fundraising Academy and, and the cost selling curriculum. And, and I think it's really important uh, information for board members. And, and if you're going to provide any kind of training for your board members, please utilize today's, today's show or, or dig deeper into the Fundraising Academy's curriculum. Uh, and I say that because it's great. I have no affiliation with them. Uh, it's just great, great uh, you know, information and training. Uh, so when we talk about fear of fundraising, oh my gosh, I'm a board member. Now they expect me to raise money. I can't do that. Uh, but you can because there are various roles uh, that you can fulfill uh, that support fundraising in its holistic kind of, of nature. And one of those is, is being a prospector. So what does that mean to be a prospector? It means that you're helping to identify potential donors and investors and partners uh, for the organization. And that holds true for both individuals uh, and foundations, corporations and sponsorships. I mean, when we talk about prospecting, we're talking about the entire kind of menu of opportunities when we think about uh, who can support and invest in the mission of our, of our organization. And out of the four that we're gonna talk about today, the prospector is the one, in fact, that every board member should be able to lean into and offer some support in providing, you know, information around prospects to CEO, executive director, whoever it is, is kind of leading fundraising within the organization that you're serving. So when you talk about the prospector and, and prospecting, are you seeing like, you know, 
go through your Rolodex, old fashioned word, <laughs> and, you know, email the development director, all of this, these people information, or are you saying, look, you know, you're going to, we're going to ask you to make an introduction um, or is it all the above? I mean, how, how is it that we can bridge somebody's fear of asking and melding it to this concept of prospecting? Well, I think that that's what's so great about these categories that we're going to discuss today, because a board member that has a fear of the ask can really soar when it comes to prospecting and really contribute in super meaningful ways that allows them to stay within their comfort zone. And again, just still feel like they're contributing in the way that everyone expects them to when they're serving in that sort of capacity. Great. I, I love that you, you know, frame it up that way. I think that's really interesting. So then we go on to the cultivator involves and cultivates donor prospects. Um, I see this as um, somebody that is comfortable in a social environment. They're, they're comfortable making an introduction, being specific and intentional about introductions. Mm -hmm. Dare I say it involves some social skills. Mm -hmm. is, is that how you see this? Yes, with yes, without a doubt. So this is kind of taking, you know, the the prospecting to the next level in that we've prospected, we've we've you know, we've identified some folks, and now the cultivators are gonna be the ones that are gonna help kind of make the introduction. They may go to a meeting with the development professional, the executive director, the CEO. Uh, okay. they, they are looking at their peer-to-peer -peer network and creating opportunities to engage with their peers around meaningful uh, you know, conversations or maybe even hosting uh, activities or events uh, that bring their peers in where they can share uh, their passion for the organization that they're serving at, at the board level. So that's what the cultivators really do is they they are truly doing that. They're they're helping to cultivate the relationships. They're helping to build trust and to build excitement around the work that the organization is doing so that then we can kind of move on, you know, to the next, you know, kind of step, um, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the process. Uh, cultivators are great. And you're right. A, a lot of, you know, some social uh, skills there. The yeah. comfort level in in sharing your passion uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. So then, let me ask you this, Tony: the culture cultivator relationship is that done with somebody who knows this prospect, or can that just be somebody that has a general? Forgive me for using this word, but like flair and ability to be social and to make a connection with somebody that they don't really know to the organization or it, or is it more personal? Is it more like, yeah, I know these people, they're in my circle, you know, I, I'm moving forward. Do you see what I'm saying? Like how, how in, um, in depth is that relationship to begin with? Yeah. So it, I, again, I, I think it, it, it depends. And, and I, I hate that a lot of times, well, I don't hate it, but a lot of times, again, just the nuances that exist. Yeah. Uh, but certainly, if, if you have a relationship with someone, again, we're hoping everybody on the board is serving in a prospector role. Yeah. So I'm serving in a prospector role. I'm sitting down with a one-on-one -on -one with the executive director or the development for professional, and we're kind of talking about individuals or corporations or foundations that I might know that I can connect to our mission. And, and when I identify those, if I am comfortable because I, I have those social skills to then take it to the next level and be part of the cultivator, then yes, having that warm, uh, that warm introduction or having someone that is already, you know, trusted by the, the donor, the foundation or the corporation uh, is definitely going to be more meaningful. But there are certainly plenty of folks that have that charisma uh, yeah. and and that 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 passion uh, to be able and that authenticity to be able to meet with anyone, uh, whether they have a, a relationship with them or not, 
to help kind of, you know, introduce them to the organization and cultivate their interest in the mission. I'm glad you spelled that out because that was one of the things I wasn't sure. I'm like, can you be a cultivator without having brought that prospect in, you know? And, and I was so, I was really curious about how you were going to answer that because um, I don't, I don't think any a lot of people can do that. Right? Oh. I think it's like a hard thing to find somebody that can draw those parallels, can read the room, read the person, you know, engage in that. But when you find it, it's like gold. It, yeah, it, it sure is. And I think that that, Julia, what you just said is priceless because I think that that really underscores the importance of these different roles, right? Is that, you know, cultivators are, are going to be in, in some cases, very unique compared to the others. Uh, so identifying that within your board, who those far, who those folks are, pardon me, you know, it is, is pretty amazing. Yeah. I, and again, you know, as I was saying earlier, man, if I had, if I had been given the gift of, of this lens, you know, um, an understanding what I could do and who could do what and what, how it looked and how it behaved, um, first of all, I would have been a lot less stressed about being a board member with the yoke of being a fundraiser. You would, have still, yeah, you would have still been stressed because you care. So I don't know that it would have minimized your stress or your anxiety to a huge degree oh. because you would still have cared so much as you do today uh, oh. that, that you, would, you would still feel like enough wasn't enough. You know, it's funny because this morning I was getting ready for this episode and preparing and I was thinking about, you know, asking and, and I was trying to go back in my career and I was thinking that I had to represent, I served on a board and uh, I was asked to go out, I was asked to meet a donor um, and ask for a million dollar, a million dollar gift. And I had never met the, I mean, I think I'd met him socially maybe at some events, but I didn't really know him or anything. And I had to go to a, a buffet, like a restaurant, a buffet restaurant. that was like, you know, $9.99, all you can eat kind of thing. And I was like, I'm going to ask this guy for a million dollars in a buffet. And, and I did, I did it, you know? And uh, so anyway, I was thinking about that because it, I was wondering at what point was I involved in this and where was I? And so that leads us to the solicitor asking for support. Mm -hmm. So I've got a two part question for you. I want you to like take us into that role. But I'm also curious, is that like a multidimensional thing? Can you be the prospector and the, the solicitor? Can you be one or the other, or can you be all four? Or how does this ecosystem work? Because my guy that I met at the, <laughs> the buffet, the grand buffet <laughs> for the million dollar ask, what was I or what should I have been versus what happened, right? Yeah, well, you can certainly, you know, as a board member serve in all of these kind of okay. roles. Uh, the important thing is to identify which of the roles you really excel in uh, and are passionate in serving in. If you can serve in all four of these roles, that's outstanding. If you okay. can support your organization from, you know, launching pad to, to landing again, mm -hmm. uh, that's really, you know, that's really fantastic. Again, I think part of the reason this type of process is successful is for those individuals that think that fundraising is only about the ask yeah. and there isn't anything else really involved. Uh, but there is and plenty of great roles for folks to serve in uh, to help build uh, capacity for the organization. So do you feel like there is um, a role for that solicitor? Like you just ask because you're brave or you, you know, I mean, like, what does that look like when you're like, okay, you're looking around the room and around the board table and you're like, okay, you have the classic solicitor <laughs> personality. I mean, does that exist like that? Well, I mean, like, it, it exists to the extent that you can have a very meaningful conversation with your board members 
around these four roles. And, and you know, our hope here, at least my hope with the nonprofit show and what we bring to folks that are engaging in, in our subjects and themes is enough for them to say, this is worthy of further investigation. This yeah. hits home for me and I need to dig deeper. So if, if viewers and listeners to, to, to today's show dig deeper, they'll see that they're, you know, they could even create their own questionnaire around these four roles that could help them identify board members uh, and, and which of these roles is right for them. Uh, you could easily just, you know, within a board meeting, put up these four roles, kind of identify what they mean and what it looks like to serve in them, and then have board members kind of self-identify with the role and then explain why they lean into that role versus others. Uh, and there may be board members or staff members uh, that say, you know, I really see you as a solicitor. It's funny that you didn't self-identify yourself as that. Uh, and, then, and then the person might say, oh, well, I never thought of myself as a solicitor. Why do you think that? And, yeah. and they may give you six great reasons for you to rethink that. Oh, my gosh, I can serve in that role. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I, again, you know, it's everything we talk about is part of a process. It's part of a strategy. And even for this concept to succeed, you need to invest in the conversations, really define the roles and and formalize how that is kind of in your, you know, standards of practice within your organization. Right. And and just by the the three that we've gone through, we have one more to go through. Um, I can see that you've reduced a lot of fear. Like the word fundraiser is like, oh, you know, I can't, like you start, I can't be a fundraiser. I don't do that. But if you pull it out and you just reframe it, I've got to believe everyone sitting on a board is going to be able to self-identify with a lot less stress and a lot more confidence mm -hmm. through through this lens. Um, mm -hmm. So let's go on to the, the next piece because the steward, I love this, thanking donors, expressing gratitude. Um, I think about the times over my community service when I've been involved in thankathons, we call them mm -hmm. thankathons, where you just get a list and you you might be all together in an office or you just do it internally in your own office. It's super cool to call people up and thank them. It is just the best, you know? Yeah. And again, I think, you know, the four roles, this is another one of those where everyone can engage and, and really feel good about their contribution, yeah. uh, you know, to to the, the, the team and, and the process. So whether it's phone calls, thanking people, writing, you know, handwritten notes, mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, meeting with a donor to thank them, you know, for lunch or coffee or something, uh, whatever that, that looks like, whatever gratitude looks like for you, uh, there's plenty of, of ways and, and opportunities for board members to serve in this capacity around thanking donors and, and expressing gratitude. And, uh, and this role, as we know, when we look at the success of fundraisers and executive directors and CEOs, stewardship doesn't isn't a one-time opportunity. <laughs> stewardship doesn't only occur when we receive a gift. Right. Uh, again, so there is just uh, a vast amount of opportunity for folks to engage in stewardship as we think about ongoing you know, cultivation and, and following up with donors so they know how their gift was invested, following up with donors so that they see the outcomes of the programs and services being offered to the community, uh, being engaged, you know, and, and following up and stewarding, stewarding them uh, so that they know what's going on within, within the sector, being honest, you know, with them around some of the challenges that, that occur when we're trying to fundraise in an election year. So there, you know, so there's just so much that can take place, you know, around stewardship that goes beyond the initial thank you for a gift. Uh, so when you expand, I think, stewardship to include education, so it's gratitude and education, that that opens up a whole nother kind of lane uh, for you to continue to have meaningful touch points with, uh, with your donors and investors. 
I love that you drew that line to education and impact. I think that's brilliant. I got to ask you, you know, over the, the trajectory of your leadership in our sector, which is phenomenal, how valuable is it to have a board member um, participate in this stewardship aspect? I mean, do donors and investors, funders, do, do they look at an organization differently when a board member comes and is part of this process? Or is it more just what's the information being delivered? That's a great question. I think that a board member's participation in any of these four roles is very meaningful to a donor or investor for the, the organization. I often talk about, you know, board members are volunteers. They are volunteers with the highest level of accountability for the organization, but they're still volunteers. So I think it speaks volumes when a volunteer who has the highest level of accountability for the organization is taking the time to call you, to send you a card, to invite you to a lunch. Uh, I just it, it just says a lot uh, mm -hmm. around the level of commitment for the board, you know, that the board has to the organization. And the mm -hmm. fact that your gift is more than a transaction, more than something that they're seeing, you know, on, on the P&L. Uh, it really, it really helps the the donor and the investor understand that uh, the human side of their contribution. Yeah. Okay. Now we don't have a lot of time left, but I'm going to put the thumb screws down to you. Talk to me about measuring this and making this accountable, because you know we have. In, in, in my world, and I don't know about your world, but I get asked a lot about board job descriptions, board metrics, board performance reviews. I mean, really like basically calling to task our board members need to do a certain amount of things. When we look at these four sectors, do you feel like we should step back, measure them or set some parameters? What is your feeling about this? Well, I don't know that we necessarily need to set parameters. I mean, there's a lot of conversation around, you know, the, the give and get philosophy yeah. with, with board members, right? And some organizations, I mean, you know, it was introduced as a best practice. And so everybody jumped on. It's like, yes, you got to give or get. And and I understand that, right? I mean, it's it's a little more challenging to ask someone to support an organization that you're serving on the board for if you haven't supported it yourself. Right. So so there, there's a lot to that give or get mm -hmm. uh, so that you can very genuinely and authentically say to someone, if they ask, have you given to the organization? You can say, yes, I have. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know that, that in today's environment, you need the give and get to get there. Uh, but I really think it, it's just based on the culture of your, of your organization. Um, I do believe in data, so I think it's important to kind of monitor this process of these roles and to be able to report back, you know, monthly or quarterly, I like quarterly, uh, to be able to report back and say over the last quarter, we had 25 referrals you know, from, you know, from board members. And out of those 25 referrals, you know, three board members participated in, in cultivation. I mean, just kind of sharing some of the data uh, so that you can determine if it is really working uh, for your organization. If it's not, where might you tweak it or, or shine a spotlight on one of these four a little brighter uh, to kind of elevate it? So I, I do believe in the data. I don't know that you have to have necessarily benchmarks and goals for each of the board members. Uh, but you need to re be able to report back on on how it's working for the organization. Yeah, I, I appreciate that wisdom, especially for an organization where maybe this is a new thing, right? Where they haven't been, uh, this hasn't been a practice or part of the culture. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think there's, um, if you're going hand in hand with the concept of education and training and support and and reporting out i think that's an encouragement as well you know to have those board members to say you know susie 
what was your experience when you thanked that donor? What was your experience when you, um, you know, made an ask or you prospected? Mm -hmm. How did yeah, you call it? Yeah, just a simple question about how did that make you feel? Yeah. And most of the time, they're going to feel amazing <laughs> having been part of the process. And yeah. if you if you have created the best culture, they're also going to feel comfortable saying, it didn't set right with me. Like something didn't mm -hmm. feel good. And then we can have a conversation around what that was. And we can either figure out how to correct it or maybe, ta-da, it's not the right role. And so then we think about where else you know, they, they can serve within, you know, within these, these four roles, but it, it truly is a team sport. There's an opportunity when you lean into these uh, for everyone to participate in fundraising in a way that's meaningful for the organization, but meaningful for the folks that are, are engaged and, and serving the organization this way. Yeah. And having impact. Well, Tony Bell, Mr. Nonprofit Consultancy, again, one of the, the great minds in our sector we are so thrilled to be able to claim you here uh, as part of our team at uh, the nonprofit show as one of our amazing co-hosts and, and somebody that we get to pick his brain every Friday, Fundraisers Friday, um, just an, an incredible opportunity. We also want to make sure that we thank um, all of our presenting sponsors for the opportunities that they give us. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, and your part-time controller. These are the folks that join us day in and day out. Okay, you have inspired me, my friend, once again. Well, uh, Julia, you inspire me every day of the week with, with what you've done with the show, with the subjects and themes and guests. I learn something from the nonprofit show every day of the week. So thank you. No, I learn something new every day too. And it's it's really an amazing thing. You know, we end each and every episode with this message. And I, I'm going to back up a little bit because a week ago on Fundraisers Friday, um, we were just waking up to this devastating storm uh, that has plagued the Southern United States. And at the time, Tony, right before we went on air, um, there were eight reported deaths, and now that number has skyrocketed past 100, and the fear is that it's going to escalate. This is a time that nonprofits throughout our country are called and, and marshaled to offer support and service. It is an incredibly difficult time for so many Americans, but also our nonprofit leaders and staff. Um, and so we ask our funders to step up, and we ask our communities to step up. And we end with this message to stay well so you can do well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tony.